<laughs> Welcome everybody to Quick Shots with Faster Mike, episode 35. I'm laughing because this is now the second time I've recorded this because the first time I recorded the whole thing and there was absolutely no audio. So I had to redo this all over again. And if this wasn't the, the perfect moment and the perfect setup, right? I hope that uh, your Lenten season has had you uh, experiencing something uh, more out of your Lenten time, your time with God. And I hope that you have uh, great plans coming up. You realize we're only like two weeks away from Holy Week, which means just over two weeks away from Easter. Now, I know what that means for a lot of you. A lot of you, you're going to have family over. Uh, you're going to be together with your family and your friends, and it's going to get different and chaotic and everything's going to be interesting. Um, the only reason it made me think that was because of where my devotional time took me, and that was to the story of Martha and Mary. You may, you know the story I'm talking about, right? The story about basically how they um, ended up having the surprised guest of Jesus uh, who showed up, if I can get this to open, <laughs> the surprise guest of Jesus that showed up. And so Martha and Mary are running around trying to get everything ready and trying to make everything happen just in time for Jesus's arrival. Well, we know the story, right? Martha is concerned and consumed with getting everything ready and making sure dinner's good and, and all of this stuff. And Mary is found at the feet of Jesus. There is a little bit of us in both Mary and Martha, and maybe some more so than the other. Uh, the story comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. So there's a there's there's room for both in this story. So you have to understand that Martha's uh, Martha's take on this is a lot more uh, extreme. Maybe not for some of you. Some of you maybe you do take that dinner prep and all of those things so seriously that you are in fact upset and perturbed by those that don't help or those that seem to think that they're not helping. And maybe there's some of you that really don't care and there's other things to worry about. So you are more merry and you want to go to the enjoyment. You want to go to the, to the fun, right? Somehow, some way in this story, and Jesus is trying to make sure that it's clear that he's the important part of the story and that uh, you can do both. My devotional that I picked up uh, Road to the Cross uh, from Words of Hope. Um, this one was part of the story this week, and it made me think about Easter and how that works and how we treat our family and friends. The truth is nobody is all Martha or all Mary. We are all part Martha, part Mary. Your Martha part is hurried, striving. Your Mary part is thoughtful, meditative. If your Mary part dominates entirely, the, the basic physical needs of your life will not be met. For most of us, though, the danger of that happening is remote. The greater danger is that your Martha part will dominate. The Martha part of us dominates and we lose control. We get upset um, and we grumble. That was another one that I picked up, the, the grumble-free life or five days to a grumble free home or something like that. Um, it's another good one. <laughs> but uh, what it means is that there's room for the Martha and there's room for the Mary. There's room for us to make sure that things are done 
but to not be so consumed with them that we are alienating and aggravating our family and friends. There's a bit of humility involved in both. Humility from the Martha to know that it's not all about preparation and making sure this item on the checklist gets done. And then there's also humility on the part of the Mary who needs to realize that you have to help in order to get things done. I loved the way it was described for us in Colossians 3, verse 12. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I don't know about you, but I could use a lot of that right now, especially when I'm driving a car. I just realized that today. It frustrates me to no end when someone doesn't use their turn signal and suddenly turns in front of you or across and you're wondering why. It's not about them. It's not about them at all. That's all about me because it, to them, I don't even really exist. So I'm only being upset and it's only making me upset. So it doesn't really matter. This is that realm of gentleness and kindness and tenderhearted mercy. A place where we should be operating at this time of year, where we're really in tune with God, we're involved and active in our relationship with him. Sorry about bumping the table. And we're also all about each other. Friends, I hope that this message has found you today, that you are enlightened and you're looking deeper in the coming weeks as we get close to Easter, that it's not just always about you or your checklist. And it's also not always all fun and games. And sometimes the people in our life need our help. Friends, I hope you'll join us uh, 9 a.m. in Maplewood and 10.30 a.m. in DeGraff. Uh, if you cannot make it physically, you can reach us virtually right here, uh, right where you're watching this right now, uh, whether it's Facebook or YouTube. And uh, the YouTube friends, it's always on Monday, not Sunday. So, uh, but you're welcome to join us in person as well. Uh, we are doing hopefully a little bit better at getting access to you who are not coming, and that's okay too. Would you join me in this closing prayer? Oh, Father, give me the humility which realizes its ignorance, admits its mistakes, recognizes its need, welcomes advice, and accepts correction. Help me always to praise rather than to criticize to sympathize rather than to discourage, to build up rather than to destroy, and to think of people at their best rather than at their worst. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a great week. I look forward to seeing you as we get closer to Easter and get to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Friends, have a great rest of your week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.